Well, welcome back guys. My name is Wes and this is Pig Week here at Fall Line Ridge and I'm pretty excited about it. This is the week when five months of effort and sweat and toil and so forth results in a whole bunch of good meat. I've been gone all day today. I fed these pigs before I left and it looks like they've taken their food tire out of the trailer and thrown it out the back door here and they are acting very, very hungry. They're going up into the trailer where they have been being fed for the last few days. My plan here is to wait maybe a couple more hours. It's 5.45 in the afternoon right now. I'm gonna wait a couple more hours, get some feed up in here, and then shut the door and leave them in the trailer overnight. I've gotta leave in the morning at 7 a.m. to get these pigs to the butcher. The correct three pigs are actually in the trailer right now. I could slam the back door shut and be done. But I think it'll be just as simple to wait a couple of more hours. I really don't want these pigs in here any longer than they have to stay in there. I do wanna get these heavy rubber mats down in the back of the trailer but I do not know if they're gonna allow me to do it. I'll have to wait to straighten those mats out because I'm not interested in getting in that trailer with a thousand pounds of pigs. <laughs> Something is not right with my electric fence here. Look how loose it is. That might have something to do with it. I wonder if it's even still working. Nope. Knowing that their fence is compromised makes me want to shove them on the trailer right now. I don't know guys, this is the correct three pigs that are going to the butcher. feel like I'm being pretty stupid by not going ahead and closing this gate. Is this the right three pigs? I think that's the right three pigs. Should probably go ahead and lock them up. Now let's go make double sure I got the correct pigs. We're only taking three to the butcher and we're keeping one as a breeder sow. So let's go find number four. These four pigs have always been real interesting. The three on the trailer right now have always been kind of a little click and Sue, who is gonna be the breeder who is right here. So we're good. She's always been kind of the outcast almost. So that makes me kind of want to keep her more. Hey Sue. Hey Sue. You hungry? You need some food, don't you? All right, we need to get these pigs on the trailer some food, some water, and some pine shavings because they're going to be on this trailer overnight. Going to get a little dirty in there, but you know, I just can't go running around at 6 a.m. in the morning trying to put pigs on a trailer. This is really the best thing to do. So now I want to get this electric fence straightened right back out so that I can kind of get the fence fixed before I pull the trailer away because I don't want I don't want Sue to be able to walk out once I get this trailer out of here. These cheap standers from Tractor Supply really are not the greatest. I'll do the very jack leg thing of wrapping it right there for now. If you remember, I attached this netting right here to the trailer just to make sure I didn't have a gap right here where they could get out. So this has got to come apart right here and on the other side, then I'll pull the trailer out and I'll just hope that Sue respects these two wires. She's been the most respectful of the fence. so. We'll see. But I'm not gonna tell her it's not actually turned on right now. I 
think that turned out really good. Unfortunately, I didn't take enough time to get these mats in there properly, unfortunately. So I wish that I had taken more time on that. Well, that worked really well. I think y'all can probably see her behind me right here. No escapes, nothing. So let's get these pigs in this trailer squared away and uh, we'll do something else. try to water them without opening the door because I don't want to open the door. I don't want this whole thing to go south on me. Of course, there's one that's just laying in it. Well guys, I am actually very glad I didn't get the right socket. I'm actually very glad that I didn't wait until I got the right socket. This has gotta be it. Oh, that's it. Anyway, I'm very glad that I didn't wait, that I didn't wait for a couple more hours until eight o'clock or so, because this whole thing is actually taking me about an hour. And if I had waited until eight, I wouldn't have had enough daylight to do all this. So. This is the best thing to do, just give the pigs some food and water to tide them over. I mean, if you're gonna be in a trailer cooped up, you may as well have some food and water and some bedding, right? I don't know how much good the bedding's gonna do, it can't hurt. We can't forget the tag. This, is a, this was a very hard fought tag right here. It took a lot, a lot of red tape to get this tag, to get this tag and make this trailer legal. The trailer tag was so far out of date that it had to actually had to be re-registered as a home-built trailer with a new serial number plate and everything. So it was a lot. Everything's prepared and ready for seven in the morning. Seven is when I need to go at the very latest to get to the butcher. I have to be there at least by eight o'clock. So we'll pick this up in the morning first thing. What are they doing this morning? Oh, they're doing this weekend. Okay. Well, let's go. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, come on. Are y'all ready to go? Yeah, I don't. I don't think they're really ready to go, man. Man, are they not ready to go? Uh, well. Gotta find somebody, okay? Uh, it's got it's got a latch right here. Yep, and that'll allow you to open it. This is prime rattlesnake territory out here, especially under these piles. They love to get under a pile of lumber. Most of y'all have seen some of the videos of the house remodel that we're doing in the living room inside. I want to go ahead and get some more boards in the house to start drying. It's been a little while since I worked on it and it's about time for the paste to pick back up. Now these boards here are southern yellow pine boards and they sat in the yard and dried stickered for a year and a half, maybe more in some cases, I'm not really sure, quite some time. Then I stacked them all out here, but they are still really not the moisture level that they need to be for use inside of the house. My guess is that they're between 12, 14%, something like that. So they've got to sit in the house for a little while and dry out just a little bit and become acclimated to the moisture level inside of the house so that when I put them up on the walls, they won't shrink so bad.
I feel like this is a really awkward camera angle, but I don't have a lot of space to work with in here. Uh, so here is the stack of boards that I just put on the grapple and have stacked them and stickered them in the house. And here's the reason that I want to go ahead and stack these, sticker these, and acclimate these boards before they get finished. So let's check the moisture content first. I don't know if y'all can see that, but the moisture content right there on the surface is going to be 9.8. Let's see if we can get down a little deeper. I don't know if you can see that, but it's 10.3 right there. Now this board right here on the top is different. It's 12.6. And then this board over here is different again. It's 10.4. And this one right here is 11.7. So you can see that there's a difference in moisture content in pretty much all of these boards. And that kind of depends on uh, when they were cut, when they were stacked and stickered, how long they stayed stickered, uh, and they're just they're just kind of uneven like that. And there's really not a whole lot I can do about that unless I bring them in the house. So last time when I brought a batch of boards in the house to acclimate like this, I finished them first. So I planed them, well I edged them first, I edged them on the sawmill, planed them down to the right uh, thickness <coughs> excuse me and then I brought them in the house and let them dry and I thought well this is just great this is gonna work out but the problem that I had was a board that's 12% moisture and a board that's 14% moisture bring them in the house they're gonna shrink at different rates so the width of one board that's 14% moisture is gonna shrink more than a 12% moisture board for example so anyway what I ended up with was boards that were not exactly right the widths were different they weren't very different maybe just an eighth of an inch or something like that but when you're dealing with ceiling boards shiplap ceiling boards that wrecks the whole thing because they've got to be exactly Exactly correct so this time what I'm doing is I'm bringing these boards in here rough cut not edged not planed nothing I'm gonna leave them in here for like a week and then I'm gonna take them out and finish them up now I probably could get away with planing these boards no problem but I figure why don't I just go ahead and do one action bring them all in and then take them all out and then finish them bring them back in and put them up now these boards right here are destined to finish up this uh, ceiling right here and if I have any left over from that we'll start with the walls and then we'll bring some more in and start the process all over again so that's the reason that I'm bringing these boards in the house as ugly as they are this is the result of letting these boards acclimate to the inside this is our shiplap ceiling right here and if you look at it really close you'll see some spots where maybe there's a little gap in there I'm not sure if that's due to shrinkage or not but anyway overall they just look fantastic they just look great and these were the boards that I brought in finished dried out and ended up having to recut them to get them all the proper width so I ended up doing a whole lot more work than I wanted to do but this has turned out really 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 nice up in here next step is to finish up the ceiling get a light over here and then we'll start working on that wall over there and you might be thinking that i haven't been working on this project very much lately and you'd be absolutely correct so i've got a goal in mind at this point i'm ready to get started back on this project uh, and i've got a goal in mind of when i want it to be finished by but i'm not going to tell you what that goal is because i find if i tell people my goals somehow i usually don't meet them so just stay tuned and you'll see whether I meet the goal or not. You said you wanted me to film you on the tractor? Yeah. What for? Yeah, so I could watch a video. Oh, so you could watch the video later? Yeah. Okie doke. It is hot today. I think next week we're gonna start cooling off a little bit. I'm hoping this is like the grand finale of the heat for the year.
standing in the shade? Yeah. Yep. Can I get the eggs? Yeah, you can get the eggs. Can you open the door for me? Mm-hmm. What happened? The chicken was getting an egg twice and she jumped up because I scared her away. Look at this chicken up here. They're hot. So as y'all can see, we are getting a ton of eggs right now. We get 12 to 15 a day out of these 24 chickens out here. And we don't, we don't wash them. We leave them out on the counter. We don't refrigerate them. Uh, we just leave them out on the counter and they keep for a long time. As long as you don't wash them, of course, you know that it doesn't wash that bloom off, that protective coating on there. You don't have to worry about it. They'll keep for weeks just on the counter at room temperature. But uh, we're getting a lot right now. Obviously, we can't eat all of these. We've sold some. Uh, we're about to start water glassing the eggs. That's not something I've ever done, but I just ordered some pickling lime to do that with. Please leave some advice in the comments. If y'all have ever done that, if y'all have ever water glassed eggs, uh, our plan is to use quart jars. I think you can fit about 10 in a quart jar and preserve them like that. I have read that you can preserve eggs up to two years by water glassing, but please leave some comments about water glassing if you have experience with it so we can kind of get a feel of it because I just it it hurts really bad when I have to buy chicken food and eggs in the winter time because they don't produce a whole lot in the winter but it still hurts my feeling because I hate having to buy chicken food and eggs at the same time if I can preserve these eggs over the winter and avoid buying eggs that would be the best uh, that would be the best thing guys I want to start on a project and I say start on a project because this is probably going to be a multi-video ordeal here I want to get these pigs right here the new pigs moved out of here uh, they really smell terrible and it's a little too close to the house so they need a new spot so while I've got the trailer i want to back back the trailer up right here and get them used to getting on and off lock them up move the fence and get them across the place away from the house because they smell real bad they're starting to warm up to me just a little bit this is rooster right here that's our boar ow good grief Putting those pine shavings in there made cleanup a whole lot easier. I really didn't want to have to spray water in there because this is not pressure treated lumber right here. But uh, those pine shavings made everything pretty easy to come out. Well guys, I just went ahead and did that because I wanted to get that done pretty quick. So I don't think they're going to be able to get out of here. That's famous last words. I probably shouldn't say that, but pretty much exactly the same setup as I had on the big pigs to make them start going up into the trailer here. Uh, all the things that they could get out of uh, appear to be blocked off. And now all I need to do is put that feeding tire up in there, start feeding them on there. And once they get used to it, I should be able just to slam the door shut, move the fence, and have moved pigs. 
Well guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I feel like this video has kind of been all over the place and I had hoped to have the meat back by now so that we could go over it and see how much money that we ended up spending per pound of finished meat. But I don't have it back and it's only been a day so I'm not surprised that I don't have it back. But maybe I'll have it back tomorrow and I'll try to sit down and weigh it all out and see how much per pound we actually put into them this year. You saw earlier that these pigs are already starting to go in and out of this trailer. I think one of them ended up getting shocked. I put the wire kind of low at the back of the trailer, almost up under the trailer in places, but they still managed to get shocked somehow. So I'm hoping that once I start feeding them, they should go up in there pretty easily, just like the big ones did. Um, but that's all I got for this one. I really appreciate y'all watching and I'll see y'all on the next one. Uh-uh. <laughs>